Well, hi, McFly subscribers. So this is what we're tying today. It's a squid fly with an articulated head. It is for a customer. And he wanted one dark and one light. So the one I'm gonna be tying, this I tied for him. Uh, the one I'm gonna be tying is a little lighter. Uh, but squid tend to, you know, turn colors when they're agitated. So sometimes they're dark red like this or, um, or like, RNG, whatever this is, brownish, reddish, and uh, sometimes they're lighter. So let's get started. And they're going to be tied with brushes. Last week I made a video on how to make these brushes so you can see how much lighter this is. It's going to be a little more like a regular squid before they turn. So let's get started. All right, so today we are starting with this hook. This is a Gamagatsu SL12. S, so the short, and it's a size two. I don't have the box with me for some reason, but I'm sorry, size one, not size two. This one's the size two. So this is a size one um, here, not not in the package, but this is the hook. Um, they're great hooks for saltwater applications or anything that you need that <clears throat> requires a short hook, um, but these are super strong. And then for thread, I'm gonna be using Vivas 140 Power Thread and the brown, excuse my squeaky bobbin. So we're gonna start the thread, cut it off. By the way, for the scissors today, I just used the wrong one, but uh, I've been using these uh, for this fly, the razor scissors, I like them. Made by Risen Fly, good quality scissor. So as you can see, we didn't start really far forward. It was about halfway. I mean, you can start all the way up at the front, up to you. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to create a little bump here, a little thread bump, and bring the thread right up past that. And then next we've got these hackle feathers. We want them to be um, maybe three times the length of the hook shank, one, two, three roughly give or take it's not it's not important to be exact we're just going to tie those two in this is a grizzly like so and that bump will help splay those outward by the way, this is a dry fly saddle hackle, which seems a little weird to use, I know, um, but it is what will give it the, the thinner legs. And then saddle hackles are really long. You could grab more, but why waste? Saddle hackles are not cheap, so especially the dry fly saddle hackles. So I'm just going to, I cut it in half like so, and we're going to double that up. We're going to make a couple a little shorter, right up over the top like that. It might seem like it's all messy, it's splayed outward. <clears throat> That's exactly what you want. Now I got a brown saddle hackle. And by the way, I'm using whiting saddle hackles. You can see here, um, this is a half saddle. You don't have to use whiting. There are some other brands. Whiting is the best, but I mean, the best isn't necessarily mandatory for this fly. So um, when it comes to dry fly hackle, you just, it's not, it's not about how it's winding on or anything. You're just trying to get it to be like a thin little leg sticking out so we're gonna this, we'll make this one slightly longer you want these to not all be the same length we'll tie one on one side the other on the other when i say not all the same length each time you're setting or you're tying new ones in you want them to be the same as you can see, these, these two little ones are roughly the same, maybe not exact, it doesn't matter. 
and then these two are roughly you know the same and these two are roughly the same but we've got them staggered and that's what you're looking for all right next i've got these centipede legs and speckled orange medium and this orange is a lighter color orange they do have a hot orange probably don't want to use that for this but just separate those on either side of that kind of i guess you could call it a tail sort of but we can keep these long or short whatever you want um it's not that important but uh just you know we're staggering different sizes here And that's one on each side kind of thing. Like so, and I've got these crusher legs and sand barred clear. Really cool looking. I think that'll that'll look good on this. So get two off. I actually accidentally got th three. That's fine. We'll use three. We'll tie it in in the center. We're going to make this one a little shorter. And the rest. Pull this around, tie that in on the other side. Like so. You can separate it by moving your fingers around to just kind of make it every which way. Like so. Next, I'm going to use this UV2 diamond bright doesn't have to be the uv2 but just diamond bright and i'm going to use this color it is called root beer on the darker one i used like a dark brown but it's nice and flashy that's about it we don't need a lot of it we're just making a little red bump here and grab a toothbrush or You've got Velcro or anything to brush this out. Velcro is going to work a lot better. Oh, here we go. I've got a little brush thing. It's from Risenfly also. They make a lot of really good stuff. And decent prices. If you guys have been tying flies for a while, you know that Good prices and fly fishing usually aren't something that you hear in the same sentence, <laughs> but they're, they're pretty good, honestly. So we're brushing that out, kind of like transition a little bit. I think I need a little bit more, and I'm going to dub this on a little looser, like so, just to get a little more transition. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, perfect is not what we want. We want this to be nice and loose dubbed. So that way it comes up like so. So now you want to cut four total pieces of whatever color hackle you're going to use. In this case, I'm doing more grizzly. And we're going to put two on the side right behind that dubbing ball. That'll help flare that outward. We're going to separate it so it's kind of wrapped around and go the other side, put two more in. Now we're just going to clean all this up. We will bring our thread back as far as we can into there. That'll help flare those outward like so. And you can see now everything is kind of going every which way, which is what you want. You don't necessarily want everything clumped together. You want it to expand out. Let me pull you guys out a little bit further here so you can see a little better. So next I've got this mini marabou. It says just marabou, but it's not, it's mini. It's like chickaboo. It's in tan color. I'm gonna grab the tip of it. We're gonna pull back the fibers and we'll just tie that tip in. You know what, it kind of helps, forgot to do this, kind of helps to strip off some of the lower fuzzies here that you're not going to use. It'll help with tie-in. Next, we're going to grab one of these kind of hackle pliers. We're just going to grab the stem, 
helps to wet your fingers a little bit with this. Stroke all the fibers back a little bit, and then we're just gonna wrap a little collar. And this is just gonna help with transitioning between the brush and the head here. You can wrap down on it and then pull it back and wrap back on it and snap it off like that. And we're just gonna wrap back up on top of that. This is the brush that you, uh, that I tied with the EP fiber. And we're just gonna tie that brush in. Watch the tip of the brush there because it's sharp, it's wire. We're just going to stroke the fibers back and we're just going to wind this on pretty pretty tightly watch out don't capture like i just did capture the hackle you only really have to worry about that on the first wrap or two but well when i say that i'm capturing more We'll pick this out, it'll be all right. So, just wrap that on. You wanna get it pretty dense, just kind of touching wraps. And once you reach up here, you can capture it now. Pull it like that, grab your bodkin, and then try to separate out these fibers so that way you're not trapping as many That'll help for a cleaner head. So wrap a couple times over it, pull everything rearward. Make a couple wraps over it. Pull that out. Make sure you don't cut your thread. So come in like that and snip off that wire. Make sure you lay down that wire. Clean up that section. Now, use your bodkin to pick out all these all these trap fibers. Going to want to twist on you and everything when you're spinning it on. So this will help. Plus, it's inevitable you're going to trap fibers when using a brush. So you really have to pick all brushes out anytime you use a brush. And you can see this kind of spun a little bit of that. That's okay. You got the um, rubber legs and everything all kind of jumbled up. We'll, we'll fix that in a minute. But even if you don't, it's fine. Squid tentacles look like a mess anyway, so it's not going to really, you're not going to notice much of a difference. All right. Now we're just going to make a couple more wraps. Grab your whip finish tool. Four or five turn whip finish. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to end up using a lot of uh, glue and cement right up there with the eye. So now we're gonna have to trim this. And we're gonna trim this into a shape. As you can see with the head here, there's quite a bit of trimming involved. Lay everything down and we're gonna trim the sides up. And we're laying everything down so we don't accidentally cut these. So we're just making this a little thinner. As you can see, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, trim up a little more right around where you're going to place the eye. Same thing on this side. Okay, now I'm going to take the top here. Again, pull everything down. 
these like to get stuck in the fibers, so. Okay. We're just gonna trim kind of a angled shape. We're gonna do a little bit more later. If you look at it from the front, it's kind of boxy. So we're just gonna fix that a little, make it a little more rounded, natural looking. Same thing with the bottom. As you can see, it's a little bit boxy. And hopefully it's not blurry. Um, <laughs> my camera on this lens won't focus this close, I don't think. Hopefully it does. There we go. Oh. Cool. Okay. So a little more right there. So let's put it back in the vise. Got you pulled in tight here. We're just gonna trim up a little bit more right at the head here. It's a large eye. You just don't want any of the fibers making it lay funky. You want to open up a space to almost to the to the hook shaft there. Just so that way there's something for the glue to grab onto. It's okay if a little bit of fiber is there. Glue should grab. Next I've got these eyes, they're eight and a half millimeter, quite large. I'm using the wind color. You can use whatever you want. I like the wind color. Um, I think that'll match with this pretty well. Um, I use the, what they call the fire, but it's like a red one on the, the other one because it's a much darker, you know, see the difference here, sort of. One's a little lighter, so. We're going to use, this is gel super glue. This one's Loctite, but any gel super glue will work. And you just put a dot on either side. It can be a fairly large dot. You're using a big eye. And these have like, the eyes are a little, they're not perfectly round. Um, or the people isn't perfectly round. So I'm just kind of putting the people so it's angled forward that didn't work thought I had it angled forward all right I'm gonna do the same thing with this one and I'm putting it so it's right up against the hook eye okay and you want to take it off you want to make sure that these are positioned even on both sides. I'm gonna be honest, it's a little hard to do in camera, but I think we're good here. As you can see, and we're gonna put it in angled up like this and let that dry. As you can see, there's a little cavity in here and some of the fiber is sticking out a little bit and so I'm gonna trim this off. Now these are, you could use any scissor for this, but these are the mitten scissors from Risen Fly. They're really good, I like them. Um, really good for getting in really tight. It's a super fine tip on it. Really sharp. And we're just making sure none of the fibers are sticking up. At least most of them are. And then this is Solares uh, medium viscosity. 
and it's just a UV curing resin and we're going to fill up that cavity You might have to do twice. Let that soak in just a second and then cure it with your UV light. We'll go ahead and fix that part in a second. So I'm gonna add a little bit more to kind of bump this up and just kind of round off that to make it look more like, you know, head there transition a little better I'm going to turn this down in the vise you can see there's a cavity underneath and there's really no fiber and there's a couple little pieces let's go ahead and get those Okay, then just fill that up. Let it soak in for a second and then cure it. And again, one more to kind of bump that up and make it kind of look like it's transitioning a little better. We're gonna put it even here. And I've got this, this is Solarez Ultra Thin. We're just gonna coat the whole eye area with it. Get those out of the way. You wanna keep this spinning the best that you can. Boy, those legs are just getting in my way aren't they all right so now that's coated we're going to spin it and cure from further back and what this is going to do is make sure that it doesn't get all bumpy there is a little spot there those eyes kind of mess me up but it's okay we're going to do this a second time so in fact you know what i do want them shorter anyway so let's go ahead and trim those and that'll keep that from happening Left those a little long. Forgot to trim them. There we go. All right. So we're gonna do one more coat of this. It is a larger fly, so. It's just nice, it has a handy little paintbrush in it. When you coat up that, it's just gonna encase those eyes in resin and make sure that this isn't gonna ever come loose. I mean, it's possible still but is really going to go a long way in keeping those eyes on longer plus it gives it a really nice glossy little finish um, looks really nice it's nice and hard just for a few seconds of curing all right so i'm going to try to do this on on the vise here but we want to make sure in transition do the same thing on the underside Just give it a little head to it. And this is going to be the head of the squid. And when, when you strip it, it's going to want to close and then open back up, kind of like a squid does if you ever see a move. So it'll look really good in the water. So now we're going to use these. These are articulated shanks by um, Risen Fly, actually. They sell these. They're a pretty good price. And this is a 55 millimeter, so I think it's the largest that they sell. And then this is a pretty thick um, wire hook, so it might take us a, a, a little bit of work to get this in there. But once you do, it'll... There we go. Okay. 
take it out of the vise, and now you can see that's going to be articulated. And let's stick it back in the vise. Now you want this pretty tight, but you also want this to be able to close. It should be able to close now. So we're going to start our thread, and then we're going to close this off with some really tight wraps. And this is wire. Um, it's a fairly strong wire. However, when you get further up, it's going to want to move on you. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Um, no matter which brand you get, that's just going to happen. So I'm going to bring this up. So we create a thread base. And as you can see, I'm supporting it because if I don't, it's going to go all over the place. And then we're going to start coming back down. Give it a second though, because we are going to add some super glue to harden, to harden this part up a little bit. Okay. Once you get further back, you don't have to hold it because it's not as much wire to, to worry about. All right, now I've got the, the brush that I had tied yesterday. This is the Craft Fur one. And we're just gonna wind that wire in. It's okay if it spins a little bit on you like it's doing to me. And we're gonna bring our thread all the way up. Right there. Now, we just try to stroke the fibers back. You are gonna trap quite a bit here. Just kinda how it goes. But do your best. Move everything out of the way here. All right. So, first couple wraps you want pretty close together. And watch the hook. Now, this kind of blocks it, so that's kind of good, but you still want to watch it. You don't want to poke yourself. All right. So, we're creating a dense head, you want to come in with the bodkin and just kind of pick that out as you go. And then you can do some more kind of semi-open spiral wraps to go up the body. And every once in a while you want to hold it and tug. So that way get it in there nice and tight. It's okay if it's not all struck back perfectly. And then of course every once in a while pick it out. And this does use quite a bit of the brush. About half I would say. You can get two of these with this brush. Um, now it is an 18 inch long brush roughly, so it is a rather large brush, but you are using quite a bit of brush here. You know, with most other flies, you're not going to be using this much brush. And that's the nice thing about using brushes is that you can really easily tie flies with it. It takes a little while to create the brush, but once you do, it's pretty quick. As you can see, I'm tying an entire body here with just this brush. It's a long body. If I was going to be doing a dubbing, uh, um, a dubbing loop, it would, it would take forever because I'd have to probably do a couple dubbing loops. All right, now we're up at the front. I'm going to tighten it. I'm going to comb it everything out, pick everything out, and then we 
are going to make two wraps right next to each other, right at the head to really give a pretty hefty head. Pick it all out. You really want to tighten that. Then you bring your thread in like so. Trap any fibers, go ahead and untrap them. or at least majority of them that you can. Those two times I wrapped over it, pull it back. You can wet your fingers to really make it much easier. And it pulls all those fibers back. Don't be shy with thread wraps there. And really wrap it down. And you want wire cutters. Get in, cut just the core off. Don't cut your, your thread. Wet your fingers again. Wrap back up a little bit onto that core. Don't go too tight because you will cut your thread. Just like so. Now you can whip finish. So now we're going to spend a, a minute here just making sure everything is picked out. This will help um, make the brush kind of thicker looking. It'll be more dense on there, but it will also give it a nice, um, you know, even look. So you really want to brush this out. You can bring in a toothbrush, a stiff toothbrush, or Velcro if you got it. Brush it rearward. Get in there. And then brush forward. Getting all trapped up there. All right, so obviously this fiber is way too long. So now we're going to spend some time cutting it. And that's where these razor scissors really come into play. So I, I like to hold it like so. Keep my scissors not, not too wide, not too thin, just right around there. And you can kind of cut it like so. Um, we're just basically pushing the scissors up into it and you're just removing some of the longer fibers but this will keep it from looking kind of like like it's cut right so um, that's the problem with cutting craft fur is craft fur by nature is very uh, you know it's a tapered um, they're tapered tips so you don't want to just cut where you're gonna have a very uh, unnatural looking Fly. So just come through. This takes a little bit longer. You want to work the front a little more than the back. Just make sure that these fibers aren't hanging up over the eye and blocking the head. You worked hard on that head. You don't want to keep it from being seen. Every once in a while, brush this out. And we're just going to keep doing this. It might take a little bit of time. Excuse the train. I don't know if you can hear it, but every time I film, that train comes by. Maybe it runs all day and I don't notice it. 
but it seems like every time I'm filming. Looking pretty good, I think. Now, of course, this is very messy. <laughs> I've got fiber everywhere, and that's okay. I'll just clean it up later. There we go. I think we're pretty close to being done. You could trim this a little bit more, but there's a squid. A little bit lighter. Now, another thing you could do if you wanted is trim the top a little bit more than the bottom, and that would make it look a little more kind of, I mean, squid aren't perfectly round. They've got kind of like a body that does that kind of thinner and flatter. So it's up to you if you want to do that. I find that just rounded off like this works just fine. There's no issue with it. And the fiber for some reason at the front here kind of splays out up further rather than back, which is good because that'll help keep that around the head and give a separation there and make it look like a body with the head kind of like squid are. So, but anyway, um, nice articulated motion. It's just a really good all around squid pattern. And there we go. The two different ones, a lighter and a darker one. I think they turned out pretty good. And let me know what you guys think. Check out my sponsor, Risen Fly. They are the ones that made the articulated spines in this. They sell hooks and rods and reels, um, pretty much anything you need to go fish. Uh, they're really great prices for really good gear. I mean, in reality, their $100 rod um, is one of my favorite rods. I fish it all the time. And for, well, it's $119, but you guys get a discount, 15% um, off if you type in McFly at checkout. And that'll give you, uh, that'll make that rod down to about 100 bucks. But it, it's a discount on everything, not just the rod. So check it out. They have good reels. They have great rods. Um, they have really um, high quality hooks for a great price and uh, just hard to beat. So definitely check them out. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the like button. I will see you guys on the next video. Now you go catch some fish. Well guys, you know what I forgot? <laughs> forgot to cement the head there. So this Solarez Ultra Thin, I'm just gonna use that once again. I'm gonna cement up that head with this resin. And there we go, now it's finished. <laughs> Looking at you. All right, so there we go. There is, there is the finished fly. And with resin, <laughs> sorry about that guys. Totally forgot that. So yeah, I wanna show you guys on camera, you make sure and cement that head so it stays good for a long time. Anyway. Thanks for watching, guys.